So to continue the query that I began uh, at our welcome time, a little bit more reflective. Anybody ever began a sentence like this? I wish I would have done that, remembered this. If I only would have known this before I did this, I made that decision. It was, um, it was really neat uh, this past week to be, with, um, to be with my family and see my kids. Uh, my twins graduated from college. One, my uh, daughter is married, and my son will be uh, this summer. And uh, in fact, uh, today, I was sharing earlier, today he is finishing up his last Sunday at the church he's been serving for more than a couple of years. And tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., he and his fiance will get in a U-Haul truck, and they will drive to Indianapolis in one day. And they've packed uh, all of their belongings up, which left a lot of room in the back of that U-Haul truck. And I told him, I said, this is the last time you will ever have that much space in your life. And uh, uh, when, when, he, when, I, when we opened up the truck, I kind of looked at it and I thought, he's never done this before. There were boxes that if he had to turn, they would have tipped over. And there were things, and so I helped him. I, I, we we, we kind of tied them, we tied them up, and, 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 and I gave him wisdom for moving. Do you know how I know about wisdom for moving? Because nobody told me about boxes that would tip over. Nobody told me to tie things up. And when I, when I got to one place, it would go back and forward and back and forward and back and forward. It would do all that kind of stuff. You see, that's what this is all about. That's what wisdom is all about. It's about giving from one person who understands to another person who does not. Now, another quick survey question. Yes or no? God is smart. Yes or no? He's probably got some things that he could say to us to make us smarter. How many of us listen to him as often as we should? That's what Proverbs is all about. And, and wisdom is not mystical. It, it seems like that. Sometimes we, we, we tend to, to park it in the academic corner of philosophy and, and things along those lines when sometimes it's just as simple as one old carpenter teaching a guy who wants to be a carpenter, hey, measure twice, cut once. <laughs> hey, this is my job, all right? Um, uh, no, there, there's, a, there's a lot to, uh, in there. Um, contrary to many opinions uh, about God, what he is not doing is standing back and, and allowing us to just stumble over ourselves. And, and he's not necessarily, it's not a joy. As a, as a father to my own children, it would not have been a joy to say, Oh, I can't wait till they get to Indianapolis and see everything all spilled over and messed up. That wouldn't have been fun. No. It, yeah, there, there were things that would, would have been broken. Guitars and, and dishes and furniture. No, in the same way that I didn't want my son to, to have things destroyed or, or messed up. God doesn't want our lives to be destroyed or messed up. And so he's given us this wisdom that we can uh, dive into. Solomon was an ancient king of Israel. And, uh, and when he, he began to serve, when he was very young, he didn't know what to do. He prayed to God for wisdom. And God granted him wisdom, the likes of which no one has ever seen since. He wrote in Proverbs chapter 1, if you can go to that slide, uh, Proverbs chapter 1, the first uh, six verses, the Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair. 
For giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young, let the wise listen and add to their learning. Let the discerning get guidance for understanding Proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise. And Shan's paraphrase version, would you like to know some things? I've got some things to help you, says God to us. Now, gaining God's wisdom is really something that all of us ought to be reaching for. Because he's the one that, as I said, doesn't want us to destroy our lives, doesn't want us to mess things up. And, and as we dig into this, it, it, really is kinda, it really is kinda simple, even though sometimes we make it a whole lot more difficult. All right, let's review a, a, a season of our lives, for the most part, that everyone has always been a part of. Dad walks into the room. He says, I want you to go do this. And we don't do it. Dad comes back into the room. He says something along the lines of, what are you doing? And we give this academic response of, I don't know. All right? And he says, go do what I told you to do. Now, that, there's a point. Right here, there's a fork in the road. An academic, uh, uh, emotional, relational fork in the road. We can either do what dad says and be blessed, or not do what dad says, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. <laughs> All right? It's going to be like that. All right? That, that, that's, that's the way that it is. And, and so what happens is we learn. Wait a minute. If I choose this path, things will be happy. And if I choose this path, we won't be happy. Wisdom is not that difficult. It really is the choice between one of two paths in life. Were we to kind of call a time out right now and invite any of us to come up and just say, let me share with you the path of my life. There were times that I went this way and God took care of me. And there were times that I went this way. I ignored what God had told me to do. And it didn't work out too well. Why am I telling you this story? Because I don't want you to choose this path. I want you to choose this path. I want you to stay on that path. That's what wisdom really is. Now, right after that section of Scripture that I read uh, this morning, the first six verses from Proverbs, comes a, 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 a phrase that if you've had any uh, church time or Bible time, you've probably heard this verse. If not, I'm going to give it to you right now. I'm going to explain it really, really simply. All right? The beginning of wisdom. The beginning of wisdom is to fear God. Now, when you see those words, initially you're thinking that we're supposed to be cowering, that we're supposed to be timid before him. But really what it is, I, I, I need you to hear me on this. Because like I said, God is not lording over us, waiting for us to make one mistake so, he, mistake so he can pounce on us and judge us and condemn us. He's not waiting right around the corner for that to happen. What he's waiting for is for you and I to listen to what he has to say. And when we have that relation, just the same way that we had with our parents, I'm speaking in generalities, when he says, do this, I want you to do this. If you pack your truck this way, it'll go well with you. If you make this decision when you're dating, it'll go well with you. If you choose this when you're getting ready to spend money, it will go well with you, and so on. You see, when, when Solomon writes, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God, it's about a relationship with him. That is the beginning of wisdom, to have a relationship with God. If you have ever 
been in a circumstance where, you've, where, where, where you're beginning to, to open up a door to a topic or a season of life where you've never had any experience at all, you go ask someone who's been there. If you've never worked in carpentry, you ask a carpenter. If you've never, if there's a problem with your health, you go to see a nurse or a doctor. If there's an issue of finances, you speak with someone who's involved in banking. You get that wisdom. And God knows everything. And so you go to him. You have a rela- but, but, but it's so much easier to go to him when you have a relationship with him. It's an understanding that, oh, he's, he's so much smarter. And because he made me and he loves me, he demonstrated that with Jesus. He cares about me. He cares about the decisions that I, I make. He cares about the consequences that come from those decisions. So he gives us Oh my goodness, there are so many good things here uh, in wisdom. If I were to retranslate that uh, sentence that says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, Proverbs 1.7 in Shan's paraphrase version is this, don't be dumb, begin and sustain a relationship with God. Know Him. And listen to him. The beginning of wisdom is about a relationship with him. Okay, Shan, I I get that. But let's say, Shan, that I I begin a relationship with God. And and many people ask this, what am I going to get out of it? What, What benefits of wisdom will I get as a result of this relationship that I'm now going to have with him? What are the what are the benefits of wisdom? Um, I'm glad that you asked. The fear of the Lord, uh, that, that phrase, as I, as I said in verse 7, the first chapter, it, it, it comes in and out of the entire book it, it, all the time. The fear of the Lord is associated with the knowledge of God, associated with the hatred of evil, associated with uh, pride uh, and arrogance. Uh, the, the fear of the Lord uh, uh, gives long life and avoidance of death. And that is not the same thing. All right? If there's, if there's wisdom in sustaining and prolonging life, it's not the same wisdom that says, don't do that or you're going to get hurt real bad. Prolonging of life, the avoidance of death, uh, wisdom and humility and honor and wealth. I say that last one, lots of people perk up. But yet, God talks about it very practically throughout this book in in multiple ways and from multiple perspectives. So I I shared with you some of the titles that we're going to be taking a look at in in the next few weeks. So just to give you a little bit of a sampling, uh, 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 a tasting, so to speak, of the wisdom of God. When, When it comes to worry, Proverbs says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. When it comes to money, and I love the way sometimes he's just subtle enough to make you pay attention a little more. He says, um, uh, honor the Lord with your wealth and your barns will be overflowing. When it comes to sex, very subtle, but very effective. Drink water from your own well. When it comes to uh, the things that we say, controlling our mouths. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. I, 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 I don't know if you remember, you know, in, in, sometimes in all, the, we, we tend to turn off, the television is so, it's just blah, 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 blah. It's the same story over and over. And this guy arguing with that guy. And after a while, you just turn it off. But I'll never forget this one. Talk about the, the tongues of the wise. When um, uh, the, the first time we went to uh, war with Iraq and people were debating, Colin Powell was the Joint Chiefs of Staff. 
and a lot of people overseas were complaining that the United States was going to go and build an empire and they were going to occupy anything and we have a history of occupying land and blah, blah, blah. And, and one guy from Europe really kind of went in at uh, General Powell, about, especially about occupying land. And General Powell did not miss a beat. He said, the only land we've ever occupied is just enough to bury the dead who fought for it. Silence in the room. It's a wise tongue. It's a wise tongue. Same long lines. Anger, a gentle answer, turns away wrath. But harsh words stir up anger. When it comes to children, train a child up in the way they should go. And when they're old, they will not turn from it. It's not a one-time lesson. It's consistency. When it comes to dealing with our neighbors, this is so good. This is, here's a lesson just for the day. You can take this one as a freebie home. All right? What you've seen with your eyes, don't bring hastily to court. For what will you do when your neighbor brings you shame? You know what he's saying? You're in your backyard, and you hear something going on next door, and you look over the fence, and, and, and what you see is shocks you. And you've only spent, been looking for about five seconds, so you run away, and you call 911. Only to find out that what you think you saw is not what you saw. You judged a little too quickly. It's kind of like reading a story on Facebook. The whole picture's not there. Wait. Lastly, when it comes to being a good friend, perfume brings joy to the heart, and the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. There's a lot of good stuff. The protection that we get is the key benefit of wisdom. God covers us and protects us. If we go down the right way, there are blessings for that. If we don't, then that protection is removed because consequences are coming. The benefit of wisdom Sheena, if I, if, I, if I begin this relationship with God, what's the benefit? Protection. All the way around. You see, because when it's all said and done, the essence of wisdom, when it's all said and done, it's not just simply knowing what to do. I shared this. It's about doing it. Proverbs chapter 2 says this. Everyone who listens to me and obeys my instruction uh, will be given wisdom and good sense. You need professional help to mess that up. But we will. Anybody ever mess that up? Any, anybody's dad ever said, uh, listen to me, and you didn't? I need to raise both hands. Anyway, and when I got done, and either uh, I ended up in a cast, which happened, um, or I, 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 I wrecked my dad's car, which happened. Um, or I, I, I broke a tool that he told me not to. You don't use a tool that way. Anybody, any, anybody ever heard that one? That's not the tool you use. All right? Anybody ever use a hammer for a screwdriver and put the, and put the nail through the wall? Okay, so I'm the only dumb one in the room, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. You, you get, that, that, that's the point. I wish... I wish it was only about holes in walls and wrecked cars. But every one of us have dealt with holes in hearts and wrecked lives and wrecked families because wisdom was not used. Here's the best part about it. You see, the essence of wisdom is obedience. And even just like we are many times with our own family members, when wisdom was not used, but grace and mercy are applied, 
God is so much better at doing that. And while sometimes there are consequences here on earth, well, hi, bud. It's all right. It's all right. I, I've done that too. <laughs> um, uh, when wisdom was uh, not used here on earth, there are consequences to the decisions that we make. And because of the relationship that we have with God, Mercy covers so much. Grace covers so much. When I was uh, 17, uh, it was three weeks before I was graduating from high school. There was one car in our family. And um, I was on my way to work. Uh, got distracted and had a wreck. I did a lot of a lot of damage to my dad's car. I could tell by the look on his face that he didn't have the money to really fix it. And I heard him. Not personally, but I brought pain to my family because of my foolishness. I didn't intentionally go to make a wreck. I just I had a wreck. My mom and dad, the one thing I had asked for for graduation was a stereo. I wanted a, I wanted a stereo with some big speakers. I wanted to turn on Boston and Chicago and let it just go. In my youth, the only thing I was really concerned about is the fact that I had lost my stereo, to be honest, until I realized just how much pain I'd brought to my dad. I graduated on June 26th, 1983. Sunday afternoon, I came back from the uh, graduation ceremony When I walked into the living room, there was a stereo there with a big bow on it, with my name on it. I was embarrassed. Embarrassed because I didn't deserve it. Thankful because I knew my mom and dad still cared. There are people here right now who have made some similar kinds of mistakes and think because it's been two or five or nine or 90 mistakes that God doesn't care about you. And that's not true. God doesn't keep score with respect to wisdom. He keeps score about your soul. And he loves and cares for you. And regardless of how many times you've veered off, you've wandered off the path, he will do everything that he can, and he can do a lot to bring you back to him, including the death of his own son. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. The establishment of that is a relationship with God. Maybe you know God and and you've been walking with him for a while, but uh, it's been a while since you veered off the path and you, you, you need to come back. You need to restore that relationship with him. You can. You can talk to him, and, and afterwards, there are going to be some elders who are more than willing and, 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 uh, and wanting to pray with you about that. Or maybe while Greg is leading the song, you can Uh, come up and I'll be standing right over here. We can talk about it right there also. Or maybe you've never uh, established a relationship with God and understand what it means to have your sins forgiven and, and relationship with God restored. Again, the elders can talk with you. I can talk with you about how that process begins and is completed in baptism. We'd love to talk with you about that. Be 
because when it's all said and done, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God, a relationship with him. Where's your relationship with God? How wise are you? Father, thank you so much. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for supplying our greatest need, even though at times we think we're wise and we think we can fix things and we think we can make things better or we think we know what to do, only to find out that we don't know what to do when we've made things worse and there is just one challenge and one consequence and one burden after another. Father, we don't want to make everything uh, public. We just want to make it right with you. We'd like to forget about burdens and we'd like to let consequences go. And the way to do that is to come to you and to let you clear everything up. To let you restore our hearts, our souls, our minds, our lives with your blessing. And so God, as we start to look at this study and read these simple statements that are wise and easy to apply to our lives, help us to be honest about where we are. Help us to be forthright about the relationship that we have with you, the relationship we have with our family members, the, way, the relationship we have with our neighbors and friends so that we can bring blessing to every one of them. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for restoring us. Bless us as we begin this study. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.